So let's do oblique. Oblique, we're not standing up now at an angle. From, if you like, part one before to part two after. What actually happens? It's similar. Pressure density, temperature goes up, entropy goes up. Total pressure goes down, but not as so much. Total temperature remains the same across the shock. Absolutely lovely. It's the velocity up here. So what happens is, although the velocity goes down and the Mach number goes down, there's a chance it might be supersonic. So this might be supersonic to supersonic. Nomenclature, right. The idea is that the flow is coming along horizontally. So we might change the view, but we actually do the maths from the point that the flow direction is the x-axis. Now, from the x-axis to the oblique shock is an angle of beta. And what happens is that your molecule coming along from the left-hand side, moving towards the right, working its way through the shock wave, is actually deflected. It doesn't go straight through now because it was a normal shock. It ends up at a slightly different angle to what it started out with, Roman's theta. And that's what that diagram over there is going to help you to do. If you look at the diagram, you'll find that the x-axis is actually theta in this case. Great. And the shockwave angle is beta. We need to change that one. So I'll uh, ask you to change that. So the so it didn't print out the bit that covers over it. So I want you to write down, please, that beta is the shockwave angle. Let's see if we get there. And the wedge angle is going to be, so it's not actually shown on here. So the wedge angle, that's okay. Delta can stay. But basically, what we're going to calculate in a minute is we're going to calculate beta. Let's have a go. So, I need to explain what's happening, first of all, on these velocities and why it goes in a different direction. So, what happens here is we've got a shock wave and it's oblique. The flow is coming along the horizontal. And what you do is you split it up into Cartesian coordinates relative to the shock wave. So this one is normal to the shock wave and that's parallel to the shock wave. And then what happens is the molecules on the other side are now at a different angle. So split that up also relative to the shock wave, as in basically normal and tangential, if you like, parallel to. Across the shock wave, the ones that are parallel don't change their length. The losses occur solely in the direction which is normal to the shock wave. So that velocity component there before has now been pushed down to this value, much less. And that's where the loss <coughs> in the velocity occurs. And because we've just lost in one direction, we end up not travelling in the same direction anymore we end up travelling at a slightly different angle. Okay. So, summary. Left-hand side is normal, right-hand side is oblique. They're very similar. They've always got the Mach number from the before the shock on that right-hand side. The difference is, though, for normal shocks, you take the whole Mach number. Oblique shocks, you take the normal component. So basically, that component there of the Mach number, which is what exactly? Well, it's the sign. All right, so M1N, normal component in Mach 1, is Mach 1 as in the Mach number in region 1 times sine of the actual shock angle itself. When you're into region 2, we've actually got that theta in there as well. It's been deflected again. So that normal component is a slightly different value. Okay, so hopefully everyone's got one of these. If not, they're at the front. So what are you looking at? There's quite a lot of information in there. Let's start. Now, the x-axis is deflection. In other words, something is in the way, some wedge. It's the vehicle, it's the aircraft, it's the nose of the aircraft. Say we're travelling in a jet-type military jet, pointed nose, and you're taking, if we're going at zero degrees, that theta is now sort of half of the actual subtended angle. But what's important in the end is it may well be at a slight angle. 
what we need is what is the angle that the flow direction has to divert by. So that's theta. Beta is going to turn up on the y-axis. And that is what happens to where the shock wave positions itself relative to that oncoming flow. Right, so that's fine, but how do we read this? So there are lots of parabolas all the way through this. And you might be able to see on them that each of the parabolas has a different number. So there's Mach 2 there. We go very close here, there's Mach 0.1.15. If I work my way to the right, back to Mach 2, 2.6. And you can keep going, it actually keeps on going into another page and it'll end up going to so-called infinity. Or you can read them down here. There's 2.8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, Mach 20, and so on. There's not a great deal once you go above Mach 20 that's different. So, if I decided to have a deflection angle of, say, 12, I'm going to cut into, say, the Mach 2 line. There's my Mach 2 parabola there. I'm going to cut into it once here and then once above. So there are two betas that correspond with connecting with that parabola. The bottom one that we connect with, all this area down here, you can see there's two sort of horizontal type curves. Everything below the top curve is what's called a weak shock. That's the shock which would occur on the nose of an aircraft if we were travelling supersonically, or the, the wing if we were travelling supersonically. The one above the top line, these are known as strong. And if you notice, we're literally at 90 degrees. So these are the ones that you could say turn up in a transonic flow, they're almost vertical. Supersonic to subsonic. They can turn up in an engine, supersonic to subsonic. So therefore, these strong shock waves are strong enough to take a supersonic flow down to subsonic. Whereas the weak ones, the bottom part of the diagram, are able to keep it supersonic. Once you go outside of the parabola, and we'll do this one in a minute, <coughs> what happens is it's no longer attached. So if I pick 24 degrees and I try to connect with Mach 1.5, I can't connect with that parabola at all. And what that means is that deflection angle of 24 degrees in the vehicle would not produce an attached shock. The shock would be detached like a bow shock. So, any other points before we start some calculations? <coughs> so, there's a maximum deflection angle if you want to keep the shock attached. Push it too much to the vehicle, make it too wide in terms of angle, and that's it. You will, you will end up with a curved shock, which means you'll lose a lot more energy. Higher Mach numbers, as we go to infinity, then basically the maximum <coughs> that you can find at any point is around about 45. For below that value, so in other words, if you connect with the actual parabola, Generally, there are two oblique shock solutions. The smaller one is the weak one, lower number. That's the one that we're really interested in. That's the one in much more free stream flow. The larger one is a strong shock solution, and it means it's always subsonic after that shock, always. So nature tends to prefer the supersonic to supersonic. So a couple of examples you can see. So we've got the wedge angle here. <laughs> and it's supersonic and what's happening is we're increasing it and we've increased it too much and it's detached. Same speed, but it's just the thing here has got too much of an angle. For a wedge here, which can be a flat plate effect, it's the same thing. If we make that wedge too high, the actual, it doesn't connect the shock wave with the corner anymore, it'll detach. From here, we've got Mach 2 on the left and Mach 5 on the right but the wedge is the same. But the shock angle is not. The faster you go, the closer the shock wave approaches the body. 
So that's why I said on the CFD, don't run Mac 1 or even 1.01. .01. Go for 1.2 or 1.4 or, or Mac 2 because it's actually contained within the domain much easier. So if we're going to go hypersonic and out into space, it's going to get even closer to the vehicle. And that's one of the great problems, is the shock wave ends up in the same region as the boundary layer. <coughs> and the bottom one has got Mac 2, Mac 2, and basically um, what have we got? We've got theta is 10, theta is 20, and basically that one's okay, because um, the only thing that's pointing out of, is that although they're both attached, in this case, this one on the right would be stronger. They're both weak shock waves, but basically the action of how much you change the variables across the shock wave would be much more at the higher speed. It's a much greater effect. 